Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy and this is my nest. Today <clears throat> I am wearing a sweater called Birkin by Caitlin Hunter. Birkin by Caitlin Hunter. <clears throat> I like a lot of her designs. And this one was probably the very first one that caught my eye. I, I'll show you a picture of it uh, here. It was, it's probably, the sweater's been in my queue for the longest that any pattern has ever been in my queue because I liked it right off the bat and I knew I wanted to make it, but I didn't have yarn for it. <clears throat> and it took me a long time to f finally get the yarn and get down and do it. So the main color, the gray, is Shepherd's, or Shepherd's Wool Fine from Stonehenge Fiber Mill. So that's the gray. And then all of the different colors are just random stash that I had, leftovers from other things. So the top green here is Cascade to, or Cascade Fine fingering, left over from a scarf that I made. The purpley color here is Distal Fink, which I used in the um, Jennifer Steingast pattern, the Sea, sea Change card, or sweater. The yellow is Knit Picks palette, left over from pillows that I made years ago. And then finally the blue is left over from the Zwag, the other Caitlin Hunter sweater that I made. So all of the colors are just stash. In terms of the pattern, it's a decent pattern. <clears throat> it's worked top down. I rated it difficult because it has a lot of three color stranding going on. So there'll be the gray, the purple, the yellow. There's a lot of rows where they're triple stranded along. And I have not done much in the way of three color stranded work. And it's quite, you can't see it too well here in the video, but it's quite puckery. And this is one of the things that I have toyed with maybe steaming to see if it'll help with the puckering. My gauge, <clears throat> I was running seven stitches to the inch and this is this is all fingering weight yarn and she did her sweater much looser but I liked the fabric that I had going with the seven stitches to the inch so what I did was I just adjusted the numbers I pulled out my top-down sweaters book by Ann Budd. She has all different types of top-down sweaters and one of them is a yoke. So I used my gauge and her numbers from her book and then I used the charts from Caitlin's pattern to put it all together. I had read that some people were having trouble fitting the sweater at the shoulders. So I did a couple things to help with that. At the top, for the plain stockinette, I used a size 4 needle. Then for the two color stranding, I used a size 5 needle. And when I got to the three color stranding, because I knew it was going to be tight and pull it in, I went up yet another needle size to help with um, keeping it, to keep it from getting too tight in the shoulders. And then once I got to about here, where you can see it's, you know, it's this, this whole section, she did not have any increases in her pattern. So I added increases along in here to help bring the pattern out and make it not too tight in the arms. So I added two stitches to every repeat, so it's much bigger along here than what the pattern calls for. And it, 
it works pretty well. I mean, it fits me fine. Also, I've talked before about how my row gauge is off and off, which it was <laughs> with this as well. This whole section should have all been up in the yoke, but I got to where it was time for to divide to divide for the sleeves, and I was only here. And I didn't want to keep going and make it real more like Swanchoe. I wanted to have a defined sleeve, so I just went ahead and stopped and took the sleeves off here and then worked the bottom leaf panel after the divide for the yoke. I worked the yoke and the back in a size medium, and then I did this front part in a large to accommodate my bust. I did make some modifications which I'm kind of wishing I didn't now. So I added extra short rows, more than what she says in the pattern. So I did the regular short rows at the top and that looks fine. But then I, I was thinking I needed more short rows. I don't know why, because it, it, I really didn't. So I added more sh short rows between the leaf and the flowers. And then again at the bottom, I added more short rows between the flowers and the leaves. And as it turns out, I, I really didn't need it. In fact, it looks like the leaves at the bottom are kind of sagging compared to the leaves in the front because of those extra short rows. Plus, I like to add short rows at the bottom and the back to lengthen the back, but I ended up not really needing that either because it's plenty long. I mean, you can see how it comes down in the back. And even though I did medium size in the back, I still feel like it's a little big. I mean, that's the style now. People are wearing big and baggy. So, it's okay, but... I would prefer it not quite so baggy. Now, I do have one huge disappointment with this sweater, and that is that this, the gray yarn, the Shepherd's Mill, Stone Hedge Fiber Mill, Shepherd's Wool Fine, is not holding up very well. It's got tons and tons of, I think you can kind of see it a little bit, Tons and tons of pills in the bottom area here and all down both of the arms. I think you can see it a little bit. Huge, huge pill problem. So, today is the day I am going to conquer these pills. Let's go. Okay, here you can see the pills on the sweater. Now, a few years ago, I invested in the Gleaner, the Ultimate Fuzz Remover, and I haven't had to use it too much because most of my sweaters have been pretty well behaved, but here it is. This end is a regular lint brush, and this end has attachments that you can put on and off. And this is what you use for uh, depilling your sweaters. So this is the finest one. And then there's a coarser one here. And then this is the coarsest one of them all. And you just, it snaps right in. It's very easy. And what you do is you just rub it down your sweater. And you can see it picks up all kinds of fuzz. So I'm going to take a little time here and defuzz my sweater.
Okay, I'm all done gleaning it. Take a look. Look, it almost looks like the day I made it. Virgin. So nice. And look over here at the pile. I took off the sweater. Holy cow. Look at all those pills. All of that was stuck to my sweater and now it's off. Yay! The question is, now when I start wearing it again, will it get all pilly again? Or will it stay nice this time? While I'm here, I will show you the puckering that I'm talking about. You can see it especially there in the purple and yellow areas where it's kind of sticking out. The blue and yellow is not so bad, but the purple and yellow is really puckery. So while I'm at it, I think I may take a moment and steam block this and see how it does. We'll be back. Okay, I'm back from steam blocking. Now let's take a look. It did help a little bit. It's much better down here in this area, but this one up here is still pretty tight and puckery. So I'm thinking two things. One, this was in the beginning when I first started the triple, the three color stranding. So I was still getting used to it. And then by the time I got down to here, I kind of got my my mojo and my rhythm going and I was a little better a little better at it. Also I think something else that's going on here is that the purple is a two ply yarn and all the others are three or four ply. So I think because the purple is a two ply just the nature of the yarn makes it a little bumpier and it doesn't blend in as well with the other yarns because it's so different from them. But now that I've blocked it, steam blocked it, and gleaned it, my sweater is back to being happy. Yay! Now I feel like my sweater's been given new life. I'm ready to go out and wear it again. Hopefully, I won't get so many pills again this time. We'll see. What am I working on now? Last time I was showing you that I had this yarn left over from the baby sweater that I made. I have this Hue Loco yellow and this King Fibers blue. What I did was I went on a Ravelry search. So between the two, I have a little over 100 grams left. So I searched for fingering weight yarn, 400 yards or less. I think that the categories are, they give you certain uh, yardage ranges. So I searched for less than 400 yards. And the first place I looked was patterns that I already own. One of the things you can do in Ravelry is you can put every pattern that you own in there and then it will search it for you. So I have all of my books listed. The Interweave Knits issue that I got last week, I added that to my library. So everything that I have is in there and it's searchable. That way Every time I start searching for a pattern, like when I went searching for the baby sweater a couple weeks ago, and now when I went looking for, for this, I always look at what's already in my library to see if there's anything I can make with a pattern I already have. In the case of the baby sweater, I did not have a pattern, so I purchased that one. Now for this, I did find something in my pattern library that I liked and I thought I would make. It is called, I'll put a picture of it here, it's called Lionberry. It's a shawl whose 
maker I will put up here because I can't remember her name. At, well, it's more like a shawl, shawlette, right? Like a, a scarf in the shape of a shawl, a crescent shawl. And since I have two colors, I'm going to stripe it a little bit. So I'll show you where I am at this point. Okay. So this is what it looks like now. So since I have more of the yellow, that's my main color. And then I'm just using blue accent stripes in there. So that's what I'm working on now. I, I probably won't use all of my yarn. I've been debating, should I go ahead and lengthen the shawl and use up all my yarn or should I just make it the way the shawl is written and leave it? And I think I've settled on just doing it as written and then whatever I have left, I have left. Because I'll, I'll still have quite a bit of yarn left over. You'll see. I'll show you next time. I hope that you are well, that you are staying safe, that you are healthy, and also that you are surviving economically. I know a lot of people are out of week, work right now. My thoughts and prayers are with you. Let me know how you're doing down in the comments. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.